Final block of our Saturday at Stephen King Rules. And guess what? We got some cool ass shit coming up right now. Yes, indeed. Uh, as a caveat, this cool ass shit includes the first tech issue that we experienced during the festival. That was me. I actually, uh, this is a pre-recorded interview with the amazing Amber Nash, who is, uh, for folks maybe who don't know, what are you doing? No, to the, they, she's actually the voice of Pam Poovy on Archer. Um, she was so gracious, spent some time with me. We did an interview, and it wasn't until after the interview that I realized the overlay setting was on the restream. So it's just basically a title card with the audio. So, and yeah. little did we know this would set the stage of the entire festival. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, without further adieu, this is uh, the audio interview <laughs> with Amber Nash. Hey guys, uh, welcome back. We are here at the Stephen King Rules Film Festival and we have an amazing guest here today. Um, we are very pleased to welcome the voice of Pam Poovy from Archer. She's also, you might know her from Adult Swim's Frisky Dingo, from Heart of America, Squid Billies, and Aqua Teen Hunger Force. Please welcome Miss Amber Nash. Hi guys. <laughs> right on, Amber. So we met actually Amber at Northern FanCon. She was one of our fabulous guests this year. And we hit it off and she has very graciously um, agreed to sit in here, answer some Stephen King questions, and uh, just kind of have a good time. So thank well, you, Amber. Of course. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Right on. Okay, so we're going to get right into it. Um, what we've been asking every one of our guests is, what is your King Stephen King origin story? So, like, what was your first introduction to Stephen King? You know, book, movie, story, uh, what, what was it? Well, for you, what was your origin story? Yeah. So I have a sister, I'm a child of the eighties. So I was like, like in the mid eighties, I was like seven or eight. It's like the perfect age to be like freaked out by Stephen King stuff. So my sister is seven years older than me and she was a voracious reader. Like my parents would yell at her for reading at the dinner table and she was always reading Stephen King stuff. And so I would just see the books around and of course like the paperbacks, like you know, the, the tattered paperbacks that she'd get from the library that had like the scariest covers. And so I think that must have been the first time I ever like saw anything Stephen King. And in the 80s, there was a lot of Stephen King movies coming on television, at least in, in the States. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Um, so like a child of the 80s, I'm also a child of the 80s. Why do you think that, um, like, for our age group, our demographic, um, King has been so much in our orbit, right? Like, when we talk to people, they always say that they were very young, and it was probably, like, say, The Shining or whatever, or, you know, like, the tattered paperbacks. Um, but, like, there's, it seems like there's something that actually really, like, ground in and, and kept him, like, on, like, relevant. Yeah, I think it's maybe because it, he was, like, you know, it was horror, but he was pretty mainstream. Like, you know, your grandma might read it, but also like teenagers would be like, oh, maybe I'm not supposed to have this and they would read it. So I think it was because it was just kind of like, he was kind of ever present, which is really cool because he was able to to get a bigger audience that way. That's what I think. Nice, nice. Uh, okay, so jumping kind of into obviously our beloved character of Pam from mm -hmm. Archer. Um, I mean, this is a show that is super, like it, it touches every genre. Like yeah. it, 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 there's no end to what you guys have done with this show. Um, has there ever been an instance in your portrayal of Pam where, you know, like there's been an inspiration that was rooted in King, you know, like mm -hmm. uh, I, I'm like, I, I think of like, you know, like we've spoken to a couple of people where it's like, oh, well, you know, like uh, I was, you know, uh, playing this character and there was a little bit of Annie Wilkes or, mm -hmm. you know, like these kinds of things. Has there ever been like direct inspiration from King in your performance? 
not that I am aware of, but because it's like, you know, I grew up with it. There had to have been something, you know, the funny thing, the thing that I thought about when you started asking the question is Maximo Overdrive was like, is one of my favorite Stephen King things, which I don't think that's a lot of people's answer. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> in season five of Archer, that was kind of like, that was the, the cocaine Pam season and it was the departure yeah. season. Um, and I, like, there was a lot of like, there was a lot of 80s kind of pop culture reference and a lot of like vehicles and, and like big, big trucks. Um, so that's probably the closest I could imagine. But you know what? We actually, we were at Comic-Con in San Diego just like a few weeks ago. Yeah. And on our panel, we were talking about this. Like we've done so many things on Archer, but we've never done like a proper horror. And we were like, we've got to do that. And the executive producer was like, there's something coming in season 14. So that's really exciting. That's amazing. Yeah. That's so awesome. Um, so man, you know, like, I, how many are you? You're on your 13th season right now. Yeah, 13 is about to start airing on um, August 24th. Actually, man, it, you know what? It almost would have been better to have the horror in the 13th season. Right? Oh God, that would have been so good. <laughs> right on. Um, okay, what do you think is uh, like now? I mean, have you read lots of King like through the years? Have you read lots? I'm going to be honest with you. I'm not much okay. of a reader. I'm more of a okay. movie watcher. Okay, so, so but you've seen lots of I have of read movies. some, but I've watched more movies than anything. Okay. And in that time, what what do you think is I mean, obviously, like, you know, there's there's the presence of maximum overdrive, but um we've had a few different people say like what was the the one most horrific thing that they've seen in a movie from like based on a king work that is kind of stuck with them. Wow. I think I think mine because it was I was so young when I saw it it was like very jarring to me and it was Carrie it's the scene yeah. it's in the very beginning it's been so long since I've seen it but it's when um you kind of find out how horrifyingly weird her mother is and like it's the first time you see like why she is the way that she is um and there's so many images from Carrie that are so just the, like especially as a young woman and i think i saw it before i ever got my period so it was like oh <laughs> no like, oh, this is what i this is what i had to expect so it was very terrifying and actually the theater that i work at dad's garage in atlanta we did um carry the musical probably like gosh it must have been like early 2000s and it was so much fun um yeah so that must have been like the first thing that i was just like very jarred by that's awesome. Your background is like, are you, were you a big improv person? Like, is yeah. that, yeah. Yeah. And I still am. I still do improv every weekend pretty much. How much of the show, now I'm kind of going off script here a mm -hmm. bit, but how much of like, of her is scripted? And then how much do you actually get to like deviate and like throw it? Cause I mean, obviously I've spoken to you and you like, you, you can ring out Pam, like nothing, like, crazy, super funny, just on a fly, sure. but, but how, how much flexibility is there? There's actually, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty tightly written, like particularly yeah. the first 10 seasons. Cause it was all written by Adam Reed, the creator of the show, every yeah. episode, which is crazy that one man wrote every episode for 10 seasons. Um, but particularly when he was writing, like it was so well crafted. Like, I mean, that's how scripts are, right? They've gone through so many revisions. And so everything's just so good already. But I will say they hire a lot of improvisers because before they made Archer, they made Frisky Dingo, they made, um, uh, C Lab, like they made a lot of cool stuff and they always hired improvisers because Lucky Yates, who plays Krieger, is also an improviser. And they like the, I think they like working with improvisers because you're pretty like just cool with whatever. And so we always, always read what's on the page first, obviously, and get it a few different times. But particularly, it comes in when like something's just not like it's not coming out of my mouth right you know like it just feels clunky and so they'll just be like you can just finesse it however you want like however you feel like the character would say it yeah. and then oftentimes we'll like kind of punchline scramble like we'll read something and casey who is our director and an executive producer and also an improviser he will 
kind of will kind of go back and forth and try to find the right thing. And I never, I never can remember like what was written and what was improvised and what actually ends up in the episode. But there is a there is a bit of it. They definitely give us some time for it. But I wouldn't say that it's like significant by any means because there are shows like Bob's Burgers does a lot of improvising apparently. Um, but it's just too expensive because it takes a long time. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, that totally makes sense. Um, have Have you ever like has has your orbit ever you know like passed over Stephen King? Like, have you no. ever actually met him or anything like that? No, no. I wish that would be so cool, but no. Interesting. Um, okay, so one of the things we're asking people is what King character? I mean, obviously, we we all have all these familiarities with the King characters, like say Carrie or or Andy Dufresne from Shawshank, or mm -hmm. um, what King character would you like to see in a, another film that kind of follows what happened to them after? Oh, wow. Um, probably, and I forget the character's name, but the wife from The Shining. Wait, she died, did she die? Do you know what? This is terrible. I should know this. <laughs> no, no, no. Because they make it out, right? Right. Like, okay. Spoilers, no. Spoilers right. for anybody who hasn't seen The Shining. I mean, if you're if, tuning into this, I'm sure you've seen The Shining. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, what, you know, after that, like, her life and, like, moving forward and just, like, becoming, like, a strong, like, no-nonsense badass, like, that'd be pretty fun. Totally. Totally. Mm -hmm. So they actually did, um, there was a follow-up book that Stephen King wrote called Dr. Sleep. Um, right. Yeah, and and Ewan McGregor actually was in the film, but they didn't actually dive into the mom. So, I mean, like, that is totally something that's, like, it's, uh, yeah, I mean, it's funny because just, like, with any story, you leave it where it lies. Yeah. And then, you know, like, what happened? And it's, I mean, it's up to, you know, whoever read it or or whatever, but it's always awesome to see those things kind of continue and. Yeah, so totally. Uh, okay, so if okay, now here we're going back into Pam. Okay. Um, if Pam were to meet Stephen King for the first time, <laughs> what what would Pam say to Stephen King? Um probably like, holy shit, snacks, it's you. <laughs> <laughs> Just like see him at a diner or something. Because <laughs> Pam would not be cool if she like, she would not worry about like fangirling. She doesn't give a shit what anybody thinks. So she would definitely make a scene about seeing a celebrity. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. Do you ever like just mess with people? Like you just jump into Pam and just start messing with people? <laughs> no, I'm so like, I'm, I hate like, I hate tricking people or I hate like, especially when I was coming up as a, like a young comedian, people always want you to be like, you know, like, like be a man on the street and like mess with people. And I'm like, oh my God, I hate it. I hate like tricking people or being mean or like, so no, I've never, I've never done it. Cause I also, there's also like, we get a lot of merch sent to us from the show and from the network. And so I have all this really cool Archer stuff and people are like, well, why don't you ever wear like the Archer t-shirt? And, like, and I'm like, what, why would I do it? Like, am I just wearing a Pam shirt around and like, hey, you guys know who, you know who I am? <laughs> You know, it feels like that. <laughs> I'm just like, I, could, I can't. I like that. I think that's kind of meta, right? <laughs> like, it's like, that'd be hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Uh, and so what are you, like, outside of Archer, obviously, we know you're you're working on Archer and everything like that. What are you working on right now outside of that? Actually, right this minute, I'm in Edmonton, Alberta, and I'm doing the the Edmonton Fringe Festival, which is like a giant theater festival. There's like over 300 shows here, and I'm doing a burlesque comedy show called Vaviana Vardot's Famous Sex Party. <laughs> and it's like, there's burlesque and comedy and music, and it's it's every night at midnight, so I'm just like, ugh, like trying to get used to being on that schedule, which is so crazy. Um, so that's what I'm doing right this minute. And we, we also made a movie called How to Ruin the Holidays uh, last December with Colin Mockery. And so we're working on yeah. getting that into festivals. And um, we don't know when it'll be available because we're trying to get somebody to buy it <laughs> and distribute <laughs> it. So hopefully next Christmas it'll be out. Nice. Yeah. Very cool. Very cool. Uh, so 
I mean, that's it for us. I mean, thank you so much for, for, you know, like hanging out with us, answering some questions. Sure. Um, any, I, uh, can I get actually just, a uh, a, a farewell from your Pam voice. Yeah. Stephen King rules. Sploosh. <laughs> You're the greatest. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you so much. I had a great time. <laughs>